The brain of the honeybee is quite remarkable in its capability, despite its small size of about one cubic millimetre. The bee is able to find its way home across five miles or so of terrain. The bee builds perfect hexagonal combs and arranges these carefully next to each other. The bee is able to communicate to other bees in the hive, describing the location of forage, of nectar sources, etc. It can remember details of its locality. Within the insect world, the bee does have a larger brain than most others. It has ten times the number of neurons of a fruit fly and about four times the number of an ant. Turning to the development of the bee's brain, the first evidence of the brain can be found within the egg. The egg takes three days before hatching and within the egg some formation of the um, segments of the bee takes place and the, bee, and the brain can be seen to be developing in the egg stage. It continues to grow through the larval stage and it's one of the few structures within the larva which is not reabsorbed during metamorphosis in the pupal stage. Most other structures are dissolved and reconstructed but not the brain that continues right through. Turning to the structure of the brain in the adult bee, the brain stretches across the upper part of the head between the compound eyes. It's relatively narrow from front to back. If we look at the different regions of the brain, starting from the outer aspects, we have the compound eyes, then the medulla, the lobula, the antennal lobe at the front, then in the center, the alpha and beta lobes, and the medial and lateral calyces, each one called a calyx. And then beneath all of this, there's the subesophageal ganglion. And in the centre of the brain, there's a hole. This is a common feature to insects that the feeding tube, the pharynx and the esophagus, actually pass through the centre of the brain with the subesophageal ganglion beneath it. It gets its name because it is below the esophagus and this is common to insects. Quite a bit is known about the function of different parts of the brain and I'll just touch on a couple of these areas. We know that the functions of social behavior and memory are located within what is known as the mushroom bodies. They're called that because in some insects they appear like a, a nucleus at the end of a stalk, hence the term mushroom bodies. It's not so obvious in the bee. But these consist of the medial calyx, lateral calyx, and the alpha and beta lobes. And these areas, the mushroom bodies, are particularly highly developed in bees. These lobes at the front of the brain are the antennal lobes, and this is where all the signals from the antennae, the antennae have a huge number of sensory receptors, and these are processed within the antennal lobe. This is where all of the processing of smell signals takes place. And within the antennal lobe are clumps of cells, or what is known as neuropil, forming small clumps, and there are a number of these throughout the antennal lobes, which are quite similar from one bee to the other, and these are known as glomeruli. The lower part of the brain is the subesophageal ganglion. And this controls incoming and outgoing signals to the mouth parts and the proboscis. On each side there are three nerves which go to the mandibular, maxillary and labial structures within the mouth parts. At the back of the subesophageal ganglion there are paired nerves which form the first part of the ventral nerve cord which leaves the brain here, passes through the neck and then runs along the lower part of the body through the thorax and abdomen to seven ganglia along the length of the body which have the connections for the different body segments for legs, for wings and so on. That's all we have time to say about the bee's brain on this video. More details are available in published works including in this book from which many of the images in this video were taken. Further details are also available on this website.